Meet Tim. Tim is just like you and me, but with one key difference. Tim is madly in love with a protocol called Zigbee. Late last August, in an unconventional move, Tim married Zigbee. I now pronounce you man and Zigbee, who may kiss the wireless mesh network standard. Today, Tim spends his days on the internet fighting anybody who has anything negative to say about Zigbee. You are disingenuous and work for the Wi-Fi companies, you shill. What a fascinating documentary. I had no idea that you could marry a networking protocol, but you must be able to, because if you go and look at the comments section of this video here, it's filled with people that are clearly married to Zigbee, Otherwise, they wouldn't be going utterly mental at me. That video is now an entire year old and is still the bane of my life. You merely adopted the Zigbee protocol. I was born in it, molded by it. Not that bane. I made that video a year ago for one reason and one reason alone. I didn't think it was right that a Zigbee smart home should cost twice the amount as a Wi-Fi smart home when the components that are made to put in these Zigbee devices are almost certainly built in the same factories as the Wi-Fi devices by the same people using the same lumps of plastic using the same robots. I don't feel like everybody really understood that point. They kind of looked at it and they went, No! Because Philips Hue is so much better than Toya Smart Life! I'm not talking talking about company versus company, I'm talking about protocol versus protocol. Today's video is to dispel five myths that surround the Wi-Fi smart home. Without these myths, the Zigbee manufacturers would not be charging what they are charging. People have this inherent belief that Zigbee is so much better than Wi-Fi that they are able to continue to charge that exorbitant fee. The reality is, five of these things aren't true, and one of them is. Here they are. Myth number one! There is no Wi-Fi router that can handle 20 devices at a time and still operate properly. Ooh, the Zigbee. Bollocks! just witnessed is every single Wi-Fi device I have ever been sent simultaneously connected to my Amplify HD router and during that footage you saw three separate streams Netflix, Plex and YouTube. My missus is sat on the bed entirely oblivious to the fact that I'm doing any testing at all because everything is running the way it is supposed to and that comment was still written in the comments section for that video. I'm not saying that your router specifically can handle more than 20 devices. It probably can't. It's probably garbage. If you cut it free from your ISP, it almost definitely can't. And this is where the myth came from in the first place. Wi-Fi itself can handle more than 20 devices just fine. It can handle hundreds of devices. But you'll need to invest in a decent Wi-Fi router for this to be the case. You could do this with the money you saved by not investing in a very expensive Zigbee setup. Myth number two. Wi-Fi is not as secure as Zigbee because the Chinese don't care about your security. Ooh, the Zigbee. This Lifex, this Wi-Fi, this American. This is a Wi-Fi bulb from Lifex. It does not require an internet connection. It can work without one and it is made by an American company. 
This is a Zigbee hub from China from a company called Toya Smart Life and it is entirely reliant on an internet connection. Your argument makes no sense. I award you zero points and may God have mercy on your soul. Myth number three. Wi-Fi has lag because it relies on a server in China. Ooh, the Zigbee. Bollocks! This is gonna be a very no frills bit of camera work because I want to make it impossible for me to fake. So I'm not gonna put this thing on a stand, I'm gonna rock it around. Uh, this is a Toya Smart Life lamp that is controlled by the Toya Smart Life app. And what I'm gonna prove is that this is operating locally. I mean, anyone with a brain can see that it is because it wouldn't be that quick if it was having to go all the way to China and back. But Tim's main argument with me is that this thing has to go all the way to China and back again to control this thing, and therefore this thing will always be laggy and unreliable. And I've tried to explain to him over and over again that this is no longer the case. Toya Smart Life works locally. It is still reliant on the Chinese server to ping backwards and forwards every sort of five or ten minutes, but you're never going to experience lag, and you're not going to experience any unreliability because it only communicates with the server at certain intervals. I can prove this now because I have just one internet connection that's the single cable that comes from the outside world and goes to my virgin router here, and I'm going to disconnect the internet and prove that I can still control that lamp. It's out. The cable is disconnected, it is not plugged into my router. This lamp should not be connected, I shouldn't be able to control it. Oh look at that! Look at that Tim! I can still control it! Oh weird! It's still instantaneous! There's no lag! You know why there's no lag? Because it's working locally you butthole! Oh, oh, oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's it! I don't want to sound smug but in your face! I may have been holding on to a little bit of resentment about being called a liar. Myth number four. Wi-Fi is unreliable because it relies on a server in China and your internet connection remaining stable. Ooh, the Zigbee. I just proved that it doesn't, so... Yeah. Myth number five. Zigbee isn't even that much more expensive than Wi-Fi. Ooh, the Zigbee. You'll still get this argument to this day that it doesn't really cost that much more money. It does! If you go to Amazon right now, you'll find a Wi-Fi bulb for about four quid. The cheapest Zigbee equivalent is 22 pounds. I once got into this absolutely bitter argument with this bloke because he said, I can get an entire Zigbee network secondhand off eBay and it'll be better and cheaper than your Wi-Fi network. That's not how this works! I once bought a second-hand car that is cheaper than some of the Philips Hue stuff I own. It was a death trap, but that must mean that cars are cheaper than Philips Hue. Put that argument in a bin. And I know people are gonna say you can buy a Zigbee door sensor for about seven pound from Xiaomi on AliExpress if you're happy to wait for 20 days. And you can buy bulbs for about 15 pounds. It's still not four quid, is it, off Amazon? And that's fine. These are actually things that I do recommend. I think you need to have all your eggs not in one basket. If you put all your eggs in the Zigbee basket or all of your eggs in the Wi-Fi basket, or you buy everything from Philips Hue, or you buy everything from Toya Smart Life, at some point, you're probably gonna come a cropper. It's a very English term. If you're just starting out, I would say start with Wi-Fi stuff and maybe later on look at Zigbee. If you've been doing this a long time, you might find you wanna open your door and have the lights come on, in which case Zigbee is your best option. And here is why. Battery-based Wi-Fi switches will cost you more batteries than their Zigbee equivalents. Ooh. Bullet! Ah, uh, no, wait, that one's correct. Wi-Fi, three AAA batteries. Zigbee, a watch battery. Look at the size of this tiny little thing, it's brilliant. And this is the only real advantage of Zigbee. Everything else is either exaggerated or confused or made up by Philips, probably. I don't know why there are so many myths out there. Wi-Fi works absolutely brilliantly. Even this works absolutely brilliantly. It's just gonna cost you three AAAs instead of a watch battery and take up a little bit more space. To wrap this one up then, do not take this video as me saying you should only buy Wi-Fi. 
I actually think the opposite. I think you should buy little bits of everything from lots of different companies and find ways of making them work together. She That Should Not Be Named and Google Home are one way of doing that. People keep saying, how can I get everything under one app? I could do that with my Zigbee devices. You can do that by just opening up the She That Should Not Be Named app or the Google Home app. I don't know why this is a big question for everybody. But if you want everything in one place, there's stuff like Hubitat and SmartThings and various other manufacturers that have gone to great lengths to try and get Zigbee and Wi-Fi to work in harmony. Z-Wave is another discussion. Let's not start on that. It's basically the same as Zigbee. Oh, that's just triggered about a billion nerds to go, No, it's not! I'm not getting into that argument either. Seriously, I don't want to argue with anybody. I don't know why this got so heated in the last video. I was just trying to say Zigbee shouldn't cost twice the price of Wi-Fi, and that's it. I'm going to leave some links in the description to other videos where I've given you various recommendations, and this advice honestly does change from person to person. I wouldn't recommend a beginner to the smart home industry go and buy Home Assistant. Yet all the people in the comments will tell you, Home Assistant will stop you having this problem. Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! It won't. Or it will, at least until they update it and it breaks. Um, I don't hate Home Assistant either. There is a video in the description here to tell you my thoughts on Home Assistant. The description is filled with information and other videos if you're just starting out, or even if you've been doing this for a while and you want to know more of my thoughts. I have tried practically every solution going, and I understand all of them and where their pitfalls are. Unfortunately, there is no perfect smart home solution. I'm sure we can all agree on that, can't we? Can't we? Can't we agree on that? I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That will tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it will let YouTube know you're interested in hearing when I upload videos. These amazing people here are my patrons from Patreon and without them, I couldn't have afforded all this stuff that has taught me all this wealth of knowledge for you all to argue with me about. These are the patrons and the PayPals. You can give me one-off beers at PayPal as well, and either way, I will love you forever. If you want to hang out with me, there is my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams. Come see me there. We can be best friends. See you next time. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm wearing my underwear on my head. And that is still pretty much true this day. This day. Ha! <laughs> Tit. I think this is Billy Joe from Green Day's actual haircut right now. What you've just witnessed is every single bit of spit coming out of my face. Hmm. <laughs> da 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 da